one of the things that JavaScript currently lacks is true privacy. And the notion of privacy is very important in object-oriented programming because it allows us to protect our code from any outside interference. For example, let's say that we're writing a quick little DOM utility that is basically a wrapper around the DOM API, but it lets us do things a little bit easier, like creating an element. So let's create an object called DOM. And this DOM object is going to have a method called create. It will accept the tag name of the element that we want to create. And inside of this method, we are simply going to use document.createElement and then pass in tag name. And then we want to return that element. And that's a great start, but we also might want to specify an ID to give the element that we have created. So we can add an ID parameter to our method. And if there is an ID, we can set that ID property on our element. So if ID, then we will set el.id equals ID. But we could also take this a step further and we can automatically generate an ID if one is not provided. So we can make this another method on our DOM object and we can call it generate ID. This method is not going to accept any parameters, but it does need to generate a unique ID every time it is executed. So one of the ways that we can do that is by using a counter. So let's add a property to our DOM object. We'll call it underscore counter, and we will initialize it as zero. So the generate ID method is going to return a string custom ID, and then it will concatenate this dot underscore counter plus plus. So it's going to increment counter every time generate ID executes. And inside of the create method, we could just set el dot ID equals ID or this dot generate ID. And so now let's run this in the browser and we can see if this works. So we will first create a div element. I'm going to create a variable called a div L and I'll use dom.create and we'll pass in div. Now we didn't specify an ID. So our div element should have an ID of custom ID zero. Let's create another div element, which we will call div L2. And once again, we will call dom.create passing in div, and we can check the ID of this element with div l2.id, and we get custom ID one. So the utility itself is working rather well, but there's a slight little problem. We can access our counter very easily just by using the DOM object, the dot operator, and then underscore counter. So because our counter property is public, our code can potentially break because we could set our counter property to a string. And then if we try to create a new element, var div l3 equals dom.create, passing in div. While we didn't receive an error, let's check the ID. We have custom ID in a n or not a number. And we would get this same ID for every other element that we created. So that is a problem. Even though we have prepended the property with an underscore, that is the convention for signifying that a property or a method is private, it still does not guarantee that the property will not be modified. So we need some way to protect our counter property. And making it private would be a very easy way of protecting it. But JavaScript does not have privacy. But we can somewhat emulate it by using functional scope and closures. So I'm going to comment out this DOM object, and I'm going to create a new one. But instead of setting it to an object literal, I'm going to use the basic module pattern to create this DOM utility. The basic module pattern uses an immediately invoked function, and it returns an object. This gives us the ability to use the local scope of this immediately invoked function and emulate privacy. And then whatever we return is going to be publicly accessible outside of this module. So we can take the code from our DOM object, copy it and paste it. But of course we do need to make some modifications. First of all, our underscore counter needs to be a variable instead of a property. So var underscore counter equals zero. We will need to modify the generate ID method. We cannot use the this keyword in conjunction with underscore counter because underscore counter is now a variable inside of the scope of this immediately invoked function. And then we will return an object that has the generate ID and the create methods. So now our counter variable is quote unquote private and our generate ID and our create methods 
are public. So let's see this in action. Let's go back to the browser and let's create some elements. Var l equals dom.create and we will make this a div element. So el.id is custom id 0. Let's create another element called el2. We'll make this a div element as well. And let's check its id, el2.id. And we see that is custom id 1. And of course, we cannot access underscore counter because it is not a property of our DOM object. It is undefined. So by using this module pattern, we can completely hide variables or functions and grant access to them according to our particular needs. There is a variation of this pattern where we don't define the public properties and methods on the return object. For example, instead of creating this function object here, we would do so before we returned our public properties and methods. So we would call this generate ID and we would do the same thing for the create method. This has the benefit of making our code a little bit cleaner, but it also allows us to use this generate ID and create functions elsewhere inside of this immediately invoked function. But of course we do have to modify our create method because now it is not a method on the return object. We just simply need to call the generate ID method. And then whenever we return our public properties and methods, we use the pointers for the functions that we already created. So generate ID is going to use the generate ID function and create is going to use the create function. So it's just a slight little difference, but it gives us more flexibility. We can also use this pattern to mix in other objects. For example, if you use jQuery, you can simply pass the jQuery object to our immediately invoked function. So let's pass jQuery. And then let's add a parameter to represent the jQuery object. Now, of course, we could use the dollar sign if we wanted to, or we could use our own identifier. So if we wanted JQ to access the jQuery library inside of our module, we could do that very easily. And this is wonderful because this gives us the control of how we want to access those other objects or modules or libraries. This module pattern is very simple but it's also very powerful, and it gives us the flexibility and control that we need in our own code.